the madman. Hello, hello. Welcome to a special Trump Reviews, the latest cards from the Kobolds and Catacombs expansion. And right now I am out traveling since I'm going to be participating in a Kobolds and Catacombs Escape the Room special as I team up with Day9, Sips, Terps, as well as Game Theorists. But maybe Oh, day eyes. nine! You gotta get away from the dinosaur! Right, watch out! What are you doing? Yeah. Here, I'm ducking. Oh! I hear ah. something. Is it going? Run. Is it, it going? Oh, 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 that was amazing! <laughs> so that's why we've got this set up here. I'm going to review 32 cards here. Wow. Starting with Barkskin. It turns out that most of the time, Earthen Scales is better. Next. Hunter gets a really cool weapon. One mana, candle shot. One attack, three durability. Immune when attacking, so a true bow, so to say. It's a guaranteed deal three damage, spread out over three turns, but you can use it to ping off one health minions, which is something that hunters have traditionally been very weak at dealing with. So now they've got a tool to do that. Notably, it does combine with Hunter's Mark in order to kill anything. However, I don't think Hunter's Mark is quite good enough to run still in generally any deck. Mage gets Shifting Scroll. Each turn this is in your hand, transform it into a random mage spell. I don't think there's much to say here, it causes a lot of chaos. Shifting Xeris and Molten Blade didn't see any play, and therefore this one will probably not see play as well, because I don't think there's any spell that's really that good that you want a third copy of it in your deck. And even if you did, it's not really worth the risk that you get something completely useless. So really, the idea of Shifting Scroll is why not just put the spell into your deck. Priest gets a minion. Gilded Gargoyle, 3 mana 2-2, two, two. Death Rattle add a coin to your hand. So Tomb Pillager was a 4 mana 5-4, obviously the 3 mana 2-2 two, two stats are weaker. However, it is noteworthy that this coin can be really useful for combo-oriented priests which run Shadow Reaper Anduin, because in that respect, the coin could deal up to 8 damage. Admittedly, it's slow, and most of the cards in this Raza Priest deck are a lot of cycle, you can't really afford to play this card so slowly. But another possibility. Shaman gets two mana spell for crushing hands. In essence, when you add up the mana cost, it's five mana, deal eight damage to a minion. Not bad, especially since overload tends to be a benefit. However, not bad is that going to cut it for Shaman. Currently, there are no Shaman builds that are even close to a control Shaman. And now that we've seen all the Shaman cards, I'm not very enthusiastic about the possibility of a control shaman deck. So at least for me, Crushing Hand is the end of the shaman crushing my dreams. Shaman gets another spell, 3 mana, Healing Rain. Restore 12 health, divided randomly, among friendly characters. So this one does prioritize things that are damaged first, so it won't just overheal minions. So that's good news. Healing for 12 for 3 mana is a lot. And in theory, Shaman Control has a good amount of tools. It's got healing, it's got taunts, it's got AoE, it's got single target removal. But the main problem is it's slow going and it doesn't really outclass, most notably Jade Druid and just Big Druid. Doesn't really do anything too unfair, even though it can do it all. That's the main problem with Shaman that we're faced with at the moment. So admittedly, this is a really good heal. However, it may not be what Shaman was looking for, because healing can only bring you so far against all these tempo decks. Warlock gets Hooked Reaver, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four demon. Battle Cry, if you have 15 or less health, give it plus 3, plus 3, and taunt. Wow, that is actually a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven with taunt. So Handlock used to have a problem where they could play their 4 mana 8-8s, eight the Mountain Giants, but they'd have to give them taunt. This card just comes with taunt. And I'm not just saying you have to play this for a control version of Handlock. It might, and I would argue, is good enough in Zoo as well. Zoo will naturally tap down to a low amount of health, lose a bit of help from Flame Imp, and then you can just play this as a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. You won't be able to play it on turn 4, probably, but if you do, it's a really good showstopper against aggro as well. Uh, that's a very strong card, it, worth considering for both Zoo and Control Warlock. And our warrior card is very exciting. Six mana for a 5-9 taunt. Gem studded golem. So the only drawback is it can only attack if you have five or more armor. 
And given that you're going to put this into a control warrior deck, it doesn't seem that important if it can attack. The benefit is you're paying one mana less for basically Ancient of War, uh, minus one health. And having one mana less for one fewer health is a really good deal. Now, the only problem is Control Warrior in this meta is not really that much on the radar. It is a well-statted card, and it does seem powerful, but I'm not sure if now is the time for it. Gravel Stout Knight, 1 mana, 2, 3. Battle Cry, summon a random 1-cost minion for your opponent. 1 mana, 2, 3s are pretty good, but summoning a 1-cost minion for the opponent, I mean, that's the downside worth about negative 1 mana. I mean, the math here gets a bit fuzzy, but my point is... Supposing you're summoning a 1 mana 2 3 and you give them a 1 mana 2 1, then you really summoned like a 1 mana 2 1, and that is not very good. A lot of these neutrals are actually kind of what one would consider the fillers. Quite a few of them are the more uninteresting cards, so this will be pretty quick. Next up, we have Wax Elemental. 1 mana 0 2 Taunt Divine Shield. Very interesting stat line. It's like a Noitron except with 1 fewer attack. Yeah, one less mana. Well, that's in theory a good deal. It's also very comparable with Shield Bear, which is a 0-4. The Divine Shield arguably can be given, like, it's variable. It's maybe worth one health, maybe worth two, might be worth three. Uh, but the point is Shield Bear is not even close to being played. This card is also not going to see any play, even though it is an elemental. Uh, not worth the card for these elemental decks to spend. Dire Mole. So most people might look at this card initially and think, wow, such pack filler. But no, 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 no. One mana, one three beast. This is actually extremely exciting. So Warlocks got a very popular one mana, one three. It's Voidwalker. You see that all the time in both Zoo and in Control Warlock. Paladin's got a 1-3 for 1. Is a Murloc also, and it makes your hero power summon Murlocs. In fact, pretty much all 1-mana one 1-3s one have or are seeing play between North Shower Cleric and uh, Mana Worm as well. Now, nearly all of those cards have a slight upside to them, but this card also has an upside. It's a beast. And because it's a beast, hunters can Crackling Razor Maw on it on turn 2. So hunters were really reliant on always landing that turn one alley cat, but now you can also turn one dire mole. Might even make the cut, and I would say probably going to make the cut in Token Druid, because you can also turn to Mark of Yasharaj this. Token Druid likes beasts so much that it's running the zero mana one one snow flipper penguin, so perhaps it'll run dire mole instead. Plated Beetle. Two mana two three death rattle gain three armor. It's at this point in Hearthstone lore history, that I will say that at one point, River Crocolisk actually saw a tiny bit of play. Uh, that was in Midrange Hunter way back in the day. So this one has added three armor to the mix. Is that going to be enough to bump this into playability? I say probably not, but nice little budget card. scorp o two mana, one, two, mech. Uh, not that mech really matters at the moment. Battle Cry, destroy a minion with one or less attack. Wow. Uh, when I first looked at it, I thought, mm, pretty limited application. But there are actually a lot of threatening minions right now that are one or less attack. Crip Lord, Druid of the Swarm, Northshire Cleric, Voidwalker, Patches, Primal Fin Totem, Flame Tongue Totem, Manatide Totem, any totem, and anything reduced by Alder with Alder Peacekeeper or Humility. Also Doomsayer. So yeah, it hits quite a few things. So a lot of possibilities. Is that enough to warrant running this card? Uh, it is a 2-mana 1-2 against a few decks. Not very good against control decks. Probably for that reason it's going to sink it, but maybe if the meta gets very 1-attack heavy. Maybe. Sewer Caller, 3-mana 1-1. One, one. Battlecry, summon a 2-3 Giant Rat. Giant Rat is going to be a beast. So it's another take on Razor Fen Hunter. Razorfen Hunter is a 2-3 summon a 1-1 beast. This one is 1-1 summon a 2-3 beast. Realistically, Razorfen Hunter is nowhere near the realm of playability, so this one also won't be, but has some distinct advantages over the other one because having the beast be the bigger one is good. Stoneskin Basilisk, a 3-mana 1-1 divine shield and poisonous. In your dreamiest of dreams, this card can take down two huge minions, due to killing the first one and having Divine Shield and then being able to kill the second one. 
but realistically the fact that it has just one health is way too slow. The opponent can poke it with a dagger and then just kill it for very few resources indeed. Interesting mix of stats and abilities. In fact, Divine Shield and Poisonous do seem like they would go pretty well together, but on 1-1, one, one, not quite good enough. Toothy Chest! So there are Mimics in the dungeon. This is a 3 mana 0-4 when the chest is just pretending to be a chest. However, when it's time to attack at the start of your turn, you set the minion's attack to 4. It's a 3 mana 0-4 which turns into a 3 mana 4-4, four, four, but boy is it really bad to play a 3 mana 0-4. Like that's astoundingly bad, and of course your opponent will just kill it, and they'll take no damage on their minions, and then you've just spent your 3 mana basically only gaining 4 health, which is terrible. Shrieking Shroom, 3 mana, 1, 2. At the end of your turn, summon a random 1 cost minion. So the card does build up and add up over time. However, the opponent is going to just remove it. A card like Primal Fin Totem is powerful because it costs 2 mana and has 3 health. This card, when compared to Primal Fin Totem, just doesn't really compare. It still also has 3 stats. It summons slightly better than 1-1s, one but not that much better, and it costs one entire more mana. Fungal Enchanter, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three. Battlecry restore 2 health to all friendly characters. This is actually very, very interesting, I think. So Earthen Ring Farseer has seen play as recently as this expansion in Control Warlock, uh, and you often hit your own face with it, but you often also hit minions with it. This is, I would say, just better than Earthen Ring Farseer because it does both, and though it does a little bit less, it can heal up your entire group. I'm even considering running this in a minion heavy deck, which wants to trade a lot, such as Zoo. So really strong stat array that's probably as far as they could have pushed it without pushing it over the top. This could be really strong. Dragon Slayer, three mana, four, three, battle cry, deal six damage to a dragon. This card kills the Dragonid operative, but perhaps even more important than Dracnid Operative, it kills a tempo card that has been in quite a few decks. It kills Cobalt Scalebane. This card, you not only pay two fewer mana than the Cobalt Scalebane, you're getting additional 4-3 in stats. So if the Cobalt Scalebane comes out on 5 and buffs something for 3, and you play this thing, you're getting a 4-3, they're just getting plus 3, and you spend 2 less mana. One of the biggest ways to get a tempo swing against Cobalt Scalebane. And Dragon Priest might just be very popular, so I think this will be a tech card, which may actually see a decent amount of play. Boisterous Bard. Battlecry, give your other minions plus one health. Boy, does that make Fungal Enchanter look much better, and boy, does that make this card look a lot worse. So Fungal Enchanter doesn't heal if your minions are already at max health, and this one gives them plus health if they are at max health, but... That is just too low a stat line. Uh, so in order for this to match Sun Shattered Sun Cleric, you'd need to hit two minions with it, and that's a lot harder to pull off than Shattered Sun Cleric, so not even close, boisterous bard. Cobalt Apprentice, a three mana two one, battle cry, deal three damage, split among all enemies. So it's kinda like a mad bomber which can't hit your own side. In essence, it's kinda like a Flame Waker, I suppose, but boy does it not have Flame Waker stats, 3 mana, 2, 4. Boy does it not have the repeatability of constantly dealing 2 damage across uh, random enemies. Boy is that almost worse than Disciple of Cthulhu as well, which is also a 3 mana, 2, 1. Battle Cry, deal 2 damage to a minion. So, you lose that on 1 damage, but you get the target where that is. Unlike this minion, which could hit 3 to the face, and that would be pretty grim. Not powerful enough to see any play. Shroom Brew is an interesting little kobold. 4 mana, 4-4, four, four. Battle Cry, Restore 4 health. It's an interesting side grade on the Earthen Ring Farseer, in that for 1 mana more you're getting plus 1, plus 1, and Restore 1 health more. And generally for 1 mana more, you're generally only getting plus 1, plus 1. So, in theory a good deal, but there's diminishing returns turns on restoring health, because you can only restore so much health on something. Given that I think Earthen Ring Farseer has probably been replaced at this point by better Warlock cards, uh, so too do I not see Shroom Bear seeing any real play. Sneaky Devil, a 4 mana 2-2 two, two neutral demon. This demon has stealth and your other minions get plus 1 attack. Raid Leader was nowhere close to being playable because it's just too few stats for the mana total. Uh, this has one more mana for just stealth. In theory it's good because there are some decks that can't 
deal with the stealth at all, so it's like a constant aura. All your minions just plus one attack. But realistically, there are a lot of AoE tar uh, AoE things that are going to kill this. It's two more mana than a card that's actually being run right now, Direwolf Alpha, which goes to show how good Direwolf Alpha is. Uh, it gets outclassed by Direwolf Alpha so much. Cobalt Monk, four mana, three, six. Your hero can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. So basically, they have to kill this monk first. A similar card was Mindbreaker, three mana, two, five. Hero powers can't be used. That was considered to be potentially a counter to Raza Priest with the Machine Gun of Anduin. Uh, this card is a less good counter than that. It does protect against a few interesting things, but okay stat lines don't cut it right now. You need great stat lines, or you need great abilities. Not quite good enough to warrant play, I'd say. Cursed Disciple, 4 mana 5-1, Death Rattle, summon a 5-1 Revenant. If you add up the stat cost on this, it's 4 mana for 12 in stats, which is pretty good in theory. Unfortunately, both cards' stats are pretty poor. It is not strong enough to see play, I'd say. Though it is pushing the borderlines of stats due to the 12 stat total on 4, which is kind of the equivalent of a 6-6. Six, six. But it goes to show you just how bad the most unoptimal stat array is. Ebon Dragonsmith, 4 mana, 3, 4. Bellacry, restore the cost of a random weapon in your hand by 2. So if you get the weapon reduction off, you can think of this as a 2 mana, 3, 4, which is pretty good. But the main problem is there are not that many weapons that you want to discount. You have to draw both this and the weapon, and the weapon has to be high cost enough for you to be holding it in your hand. But this card does, on the bright side, accelerate you towards those weapons. Having seen all the legendary weapons, it doesn't seem like any of them are particularly worth ramping to. Fungal Mancer, 5 mana 2-2. Two, two. Battle Cry, give adjacent minions plus 2 plus 2. 5 mana 6-6 six, six in the best case, 4 of which have a charge. So the bad news is this card has to be compared with Bone Mare. You also get Taunt, and you also only have to have one minion on the board instead of two. Fungal Mancer is a clear win more card, and if you want to win more, you want to go for a really big win more card, such as Savage Roar or Bloodlust. This doesn't quite cut it. Troglumeter, 5 mana 1, 5, Taunt Poisonous. This card is really bad against control decks that don't run very many minions, and that's Raza Priest. The reason this card won't do very well is because a lot of cards of even or lower mana cost can trade very efficiently with it. Uh, they just need to have 5 attack and not that much health. Some 4 mana cards, a lot of 5 mana cards, or 2 cheap 1 slash 2 mana cards. So no, unfortunately Venomancer 2.0 is not going to see play. Green Jelly, 5 mana 3-3. Three, three. At the end of your turn, summon a 1-2 Ooze with Taunt. So Hogger currently doesn't see any play. Hogger has plus 1 mana for plus 1 plus 1 stats, and summons 2-2s two instead of 1-2 Oozes with Taunts. 1-2 Oozes with Taunts are pretty comparable to 2-2s. Two Basically, since Hogger is nowhere near the good list right now, so too will Green Jelly. It's no Sludge Belcher either, because even though you probably have to kill the Green Jelly, because the value gained by the Oozes is too much, it's still, when you add up the stats, basically a 5 mana 4 5, which is just not strong enough. Corrosive Sludge, 5 mana 5 5, Battle Cry, destroy your opponent's weapon. Boy, there are sure a lot of ooze type effects right now, and I'm not entirely sure that this one will ever see play over the armor gain ooze instead. Uh, you might have expected weapon removal to be at a high premium due to this expansion's legendary weapons, but turns out the legendary weapons are all pretty narrow, and some of them are tough to destroy. I don't think we're going to be in a legendary weapon meta. This card is unlikely to be a tech card this time around. And I'm not entirely sure it will ever be a tech card because the other ooze options appear to be better. Corridor Creeper, 7 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Costs 1 less whenever a minion dies while this is in your hand. I actually briefly considered this in both Shaman as well as Zoo, since it has the serious potential to go get quite a discount. But the main problem is you wouldn't really want to keep this card in your hand, so it's a bad top deck. You have to have kind of a very specific board situation to go on for it to be good. Just a bit too much of a risk of having a 7 mana 5-5 five, five to try to gain that benefit off of it. Violet Worm, 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven beast, death rattle, 
Summon seven one one grubs, which are presumably also beasts. Worth mentioning is due to the death rattle, this can be pulled with Nazoth for tremendous value, since Nazoth is generally looking for cards which have high mana and have death rattle. Uh, but still, this is too slow for your Nazoth deck, because it's just an eight mana seven seven really, no immediate effect. Filling your board with one ones not that strong. Uh, a comparable card is a Nixia that didn't see any play. So too, Violet Worm will unlikely see play. And that's it! That's all the cards in Kobolds and Catacombs. I had a lot of time on my flight to be able to decide what star ratings I was going to give all these cards. So look forward to hearing my thoughts on all the star values of all the cards in the next video.